good day everyone so and now we'll uh, discuss about uh, basic programming in arm 7 processor so um, in this video we'll uh, discuss about uh, how to uh, program the basic uh, simple programs in kale so first of all we'll uh, try to uh, open the kale software so kale is a <coughs> open in software as far as uh, student version is concerned so you can uh, use it uh, basically for up to 32 kilobytes of memory you can download it from the uh, kale website itself so here first uh, whatever the scene uh, screen appears you can see that uh, some division program it is showing so we'll uh, ignore that and we'll start from the uh, project so in case uh, in your system also if uh, you are finding something already been done you can ignore it and you can have this as your uh, uh, procedure for starting the program so first uh, uh, click on this project click new musician project so it will open a window like this prompting you to type a name for the project so this will be the project name so under this project name you will have uh, you can have different uh, asm files so now we will give a project name so I'll uh, give it like uh, RET or RETT and uh, save when you click this save a window will be opening like this so in which the uh, ARM higher end versions will be available in this particular uh, uh, block but uh, we are going to discuss about uh, ARM 7 LPC 2148 to get into that we'll have to uh, choose this legacy devices so in this legacy devices you will you go for I mean you search for um, NXP so click on this plus button of NXP and you search for this LPC 2148 so LPC 2148 is the processor that we are going to uh, use for programming so I'll choose this LPC 2148 after clicking this LPC 2148 click OK and uh, yes and you can uh, click yes again so this is the project RETT and this is the target inside the target you have this source group inside the source group you will have the startup.s this startup.s is concerned with uh, the basic files uh, in case if you are uh, writing the program in uh, C then your startup.s will have the uh, all the header files and other things so as of now we are going to uh, do programming in assembly language so startup.s is not required and we'll have to remove that one you can right click on startup.s and click remove file startup.s so this will remove the file after doing this you just click uh, you can click this uh, new button over here or file new you can click so this is the window where we are supposed to type the ARM assembly language program so ARM assembly language program you will have to first start with this uh, statement area for defining the area that you are going to write and uh, you can write whatever the label that you want so I am writing PONN then this is a label just a label you can write in your name or uh, SUM also you can write so comma space you'll have to specify the uh, uh, the content that we are going to write after this statement is a code so I'm writing it as CODE then comma space read only so this particular uh, program should be saved in the read only memory that is the meaning so initially we'll have to start with the tab so uh, in for the ARM compiler this initial tab is concerned with uh, <coughs> giving the labels so any instruction should not be starting with this first tab so you'll have to give a first tab and uh, start writing the uh, instruction so this is the first line that is essential to be given in any of the programs uh, so whatever the programs that we write in assembly language should start with this instruction then uh, I mean uh, will uh, start with uh, writing a very basic program like addition adding two numbers so I'll be putting uh, a number one number in uh, R0 register and uh, some other number in R1 register and I'll be adding these two numbers so that will be our task for this program so first MOV R0 comma hash 0x03 
then mov r1 comma hash 0x 0 2 so these two instruction what it does is it copies the content here um, uh, mov is like a copy copy 3 into the r0 register so this uh, uh, copying happens in uh, from right to left so 3 is moved into r0 this hash represents that this is going to be a number and this 0x represents that the number is a hexadecimal number this is the uh, basic uh, um, uh, quote, I mean, uh, notation as far as any um, numerical representation is concerned. So, wherever you go for, uh, we go for uh, representing the uh, numbers, your uh, number should start with hash. Then add r2, r1, r0. So, here the content of r1 and r0 is added and the result is stored into r2 this is the meaning so here r0 r1 is added and the result is stored inside r2 so this is the end of the program only three instruction so with three instruction we have uh, completed adding the uh, two numbers so after completing this i'll write a statement over here like l b e l so this is like uh, after um, completing the execution of all the three instruction it should come and stay in this instruction so it shouldn't go beyond this instruction or it shouldn't uh, go for repeating the um, uh, mean instruction whatever available over there so to make the program counter come and stop over here I have made it like a B L and L so here it means that this is branch unconditional branch that it, it is uh, uh, jumping in the same statement itself so that is the one so after this instruction i'll put a end statement so this is the end of the program so now i have uh, written a simple program so then you'll have to save it so i am clicking save and uh, <coughs> you can specify whichever path that you want and i am giving uh, uh, ADD or uh, ADD one dot ASM and save. So after saving, you can see that uh, there is a uh, different colors. I mean, the instructions appearing in different color registers appearing in different colors and numbers appearing in different colors. By this, you can understand that uh, um, your uh, program is being ac accepted. In this case, you will have to understand one thing. So, in case if uh, your instruction doesn't uh, appear in this color, it means that there is something, some syntax error. Or uh, if the register doesn't appear R1, it means that, I mean, uh, the register of uh, R1 or R0, it, uh, it is not appearing in green color. It means that uh, that register is not accepted. For example, in uh, most of you, um, most of us will uh, make a mistake of, uh, instead of uh, typing O, um, in 0, we'll be typing O. So, if you type RO, you can see that uh, it is appearing in black color. So, it is not accepted as a register. So, uh, once I replace that O with 0, you can see that the color is getting changed. So, uh, by this way, we can understand uh, what is the thing that is going wrong over there. So, after uh, completing the program, you right click on the source group. So and add existing files to group source group you click on that and uh, here in file type you select this asm so in the asm you search for this add1.asm so add1.asm is there i'm clicking that and click add so and you can close this uh, window so now add1.asm is in the source group and the program is there so uh, we need to check whether the program doesn't have any errors or not so click the translate and uh, it will show you whether any error is there so zero error zero warning so if it does have a warning you can uh, ignore that one warning is not a big deal so but error should be zero error if, uh, if you have an error uh, the line number will be specified for example the r0 if I am uh, making it as R, uh, R O and uh, I am running the translate, you can see that uh, uh, it is uh, specifying that 
add1 dot asm in the bracket 2 so this 2 represents the line number in the line number 2 uh, r0 is a bad register name symbol so by this we can understand where the program is going wrong so the line number will be specified and uh, with that we can go for rectifying that and after rectifying you go for saving it and then clicking click translate so after clicking translate you can uh, see that there is a zero error and zero warning so <coughs> after this after translate you click this build and uh, you should get zero error and zero warning then rebuild so now your uh, program is ready to run so now um, we'll uh, click this start stop debug session you can go by this way or you can uh, click this uh, debug and start stop debug session this is exactly uh, the way in which we are uh, going to run the program inside your uh, microcontroller so it's like a simulation so initially we have uh, written the program and uh, checked for its uh, uh, syntax errors and other things and uh, next is we are clicking this start stop debug session <coughs> so now this is the start stop debug session so in the I mean this is the debug session start stop uh, debug session is the button so this is the uh, st after starting debug session the window appears like this in which you have a disassembly window this is the register window and this is the program window and you can see a pointer pointing towards uh, the instruction that is uh, going to be executed okay so now <coughs> I'm going to run the program so you can uh, run the program by clicking this button it will totally run and it will uh, show you the uh, result so in case if you want to do step by step so step by step will ha will be helpful in many cases where wherein uh, if you want to check which instruction is going out of our uh, um, in uh, desired operation we can understand by using this step by step operation so I am using this uh, step by step operation to know where uh, how the instruction is getting executed so now first time uh, clicking this button so you can see uh, R0 is loaded with 3 and then again R1 is loaded with 2 again add R2 R1 R0 so uh, R0 and R1 is added and the result is stored in R2 so R2 is 5 after this if, if, even if I click this button it comes and stays in this particular instruction itself if I am not having this instruction it will try to execute after this or it will go b behind and uh, uh, do some other operations so that uh, to avoid that it is always better to have this particular instruction so that it comes and stays in this instruction itself so this is the uh, principle of I mean uh, the explanation for uh, how to create a program in the assembly language as far as addition is concerned you can replace this add with the subtract one more thing uh, beware in this start stop debug session you can see this disassembly window this disassembly window is uh, very important you can see each and every instruction is being uh, disassembled into its equivalent opcodes so mov r1 comma hash 0x02 has been disassembled into these uh, values similarly uh, your uh, um, so, uh, yeah uh, mov r1 comma hash 0x02 is uh, disassembled into this one uh, so uh, e3 a0 1 uh, 00 2 <coughs> those are the hexadecimal values equivalent to mov r1 comma hash 0x02 and uh, add has been uh, disassembled into uh, these uh, uh, hexadecimal values so while we are uh, dumping the code into the um, arm processor only these things gets into your uh, microprocessor your uh, microprocessor doesn't understand this mov or add or anything so when you are dumping it understands only this hexadecimal codes so that is the uh, I mean in case if you want to know what has been uh, is happening inside the your uh, uh, arm processor I mean uh, what is the value that is getting inside the arm processor you can understand from this disassembled window so that is the reason that uh, they have kept this disassembly window <coughs>
and in case if you want to um, edit your program you will have to come out of the start stop debug session uh, initially we have started and we have come to this particular uh, window now we will stop it by clicking the same button so it has gone to the uh, other uh, I mean uh, the mode where you can go for editing your program so here itself I am editing it to subtract S U B R2 comma R1 comma R0 so here R1 minus R0 will happen so since R1 is lesser than R0 so I will make this R1 as bigger than R0 say like 6 6 minus 3 I should get an answer of 3 so uh, I don't have to do anything I'll just save it same IADD 1.ASM itself this uh, subtraction program is saved so the same program I'll translate build and rebuild <coughs> and I'll uh, go for uh, starting I mean start stop debug session so in the start stop debug session I'll uh, run it as I've done earlier so 3 6 and uh, 6 minus 3 uh, 3 is loaded into R2 register so uh, with the same uh, program itself I have edited so in case if you feel that uh, uh, you don't want to um, edit it in the same file because like you want uh, addition as a separate program and uh, subtraction as a separate program we can leave this as such ADD let it be there and uh, we have left it with uh, 3 and 2 so let it be as ADD 1.ASM we can close this file and we can remove the file add1.asm and we can create a new file by clicking this uh, uh, new so here we can type a new file with area okay so now I have created a new file and again I will follow the same procedure that I have followed uh, earlier by clicking the save button I can type sub dot asm and click save so now the uh, file has saved and uh, sub dot asm I will have to add it again so I have created a new file when I have created a new file that has to be added added into the source group so to do that I am uh, searching for the sub.asm so click sub.asm add and close now again follow the same procedure translate build and it is showing one warning warning is like a uh, missing end uh, statement so we will type the end statement and again click save translate build rebuild now I will get into the start stop debug session so now I will run it step by step so first instruction is loaded R0 is loaded with the 2 second instruction 3 is loaded into R1 and uh, 3 minus 2 is 1 ok so this is uh, one kind of uh, running the program and in addition to this if in case if you are giving R0 as 3 and R1 as 2 what will happen is it won't show any negative number 2 minus 3 will be FFFFF so all the values will become FFFF but your um, borrow flag will be set as far as ARM processor is concerned when borrow is happening your uh, carry flag will be reset when addition is happening carry flag will be uh, set 
I mean when carry happens carry flag will be set but uh, for uh, in subtraction when borrow happens your uh, carry flag will be reset so uh, when if you want your carry flag to be reset you'll have to specify this yes yes you bs signify that your um, flag registers will get affected after this arithmetic operation okay let us check so we have uh, uh, translated builded and rebuilded the thing and uh, let us run the program so 3 loaded 2 loaded and subtraction you can see r2 is loaded with fffff i mean all the all the eight uh, digits are f while well, let us check the uh, carry flag you can see the carry flag is zero so in, this is cpsr cpsr means current program status register so in the current program status register your uh, <coughs> carry flag is reset to represent the borrow has happened so this we haven't checked for the subtraction normal subtraction let us check for uh, uh, in case if this value is 2 I mean r0 value is 2 and r1 value is 3 so translate build and rebuild now r0 is loaded with 2 r1 is loaded with 3 so 3 minus 2 is 1 let us check the CPSR so you can see carry flag is uh, set which means that borrow is not there because like uh, when borrow has happened carry flag will be set I mean when borrow has uh, hasn't happened carry flag will be set when borrow has happened carry flag will be reset that is the uh, formula for um, the ARM processor subtraction so this is a bit um, uh, I mean different from the other processor wherein uh, in uh, for example in 8051 you have the uh, process of uh, uh, getting the carry flag set when carry is happening in addition or borrow is happening while subtraction both the cases carry flag will be set in 8051 but as far as this arm is concerned if uh, carry f I mean if uh, you are adding any two numbers if you get a carry then carry flag will be set and if you when you are subtracting any two numbers when you get a borrow your carry flag will be reset and if you don't get a borrow carry flag will be set so that is the one that you'll have to understand as far as arm is concerned so based upon that the other programs uh, you'll have to write for uh, uh, writing some decision making instructions so this is for addition and subtraction in case if you want to do with multiplication so let us uh, <coughs> try with the multiplication with the number uh, same numbers we can try 3 and 2 itself so I'll uh, edit it in this uh, particular file itself M U L so multiply uh, multiply R1 and R0 and place the result into R2 so 3 into 2 6 should be placed inside R2 the multi M U L instruction is uh, basically like uh, you will get a 32-bit uh, result only so it has its own limitations MUL instruction should be used only when you are sure that your result will not go to 64-bit because as uh, when you are uh, multiplying any thir two 32-bit numbers you can't be sure that always you will be getting only 32-bit numbers in most of the cases when the numbers is a number in both two numbers are uh, large you are uh, prone to get uh, 64 bit numbers so uh, in that cases you can't use this when you are sure that you are going to get only <coughs> 32 bit number as a result you will have you can use this MUL instruction so let us check the uh, program so translate build and rebuild so R0 is loaded with 2, R1 is loaded with 3 and R2 is loaded with 6 so this is the multiplication and one more thing in case if we want to multiply any two numbers and uh, uh, you want to get a 64 bit number then you will have to write U M U L L that is long multiply unsigned long multiply so let us uh, do that in a separate uh, file to avoid confusions 
so I'll uh, do it in a separate file so I'll uh, close this sub and remove the sub from here and we need to put u m u l l long multiply so r1 and r0 is multiplied and r3 and r2 will be having the result so this also will save So now uh, the multiplication program I will add, add to the source group. I have added. Now again the same procedure, translate, build and rebuild. So again I am doing the same procedure R0 is loaded with 2 R1 is loaded with 3 and uh, R3 is having the 6 so R3 will have the lower 32 bit and R2 will be having the higher 32 bit since the number is very less only the R3 is having the uh, lower uh, 32 bit while R2 is, not, is having the value 0 let us check with the uh, larger number so when uh, one more thing you'll have to understand as far as uh, move is concerned uh, move is limited with uh, certain values some 8 bit numbers if you're moving then it is fine otherwise uh, uh, when you're uh, moving larger number so which cannot be rotated so you need to use LDR so LDR R not comma e equal to 0 X 3 4 5 6 um, sorry, 3 4 5 4 2 1 0 0 and uh, LDR R1 comma equal to 0 X 2 1 3 5 6 0 0 so total 32 bit number I have uh, moved it into R0 and R1 register now let us check how the program runs translate build and rebuild start stop debug session now uh, you can see R0 is loaded with the value that I have uh, initialized R1 with the value that I have initialized then multiplication so it is giving a number so you need to check whether this number is correct or not so you can use basically the calculator in the calculator you can uh, uh, click this programmer and uh, click the hexadecimal and you can type whatever the number that we have uh, given as an input the input is 3 4 5 4 2 1 double 0 multiplied by 2 1 3 5 6 8 double 0 so you can see 6 7 9 C 2 E E 0 2 6 8 0 0 0 0 so the number is the multiplied number is correct so by this we can understand uh, long multiplication has been performed by this program so this is the uh, multiplication program and uh, coming to division you don't have a uh, div instruction as far as arm is concerned so what you have to do is basically you'll have to do repeated subtraction to divide any two numbers so repeated subtra uh, subtraction how it would be performed so let us see that so I'll uh, open a new text file we'll start with the new area okay now I'll move some value I'll assume that I'm going to Uh, divide 5 divided by 2 
b r2 comma hash 0x 02 as far as uh, this uh, simple division program is concerned uh, we'll be doing the division in such a way like um, we'll be getting a quotient and a reminder we'll not be getting any uh, uh, i mean uh, numbers like 2.5 i mean 5 divided by 2 is uh, 2.5 so we'll not uh, get the result as 2.5 instead we'll uh, uh, for this program we'll get the result as uh, 2 as quotient and 1 as reminder so to do that uh, first what we have to do is we'll have to compare compare r1 and r2 so I am putting this CMP statement CMP does compares R I mean CMP R1 comma R2 so basically compare instruction uh, subtracts the two registers that has been specified so it does like R1 minus R2 and it doesn't store the result anywhere but it affects the flag registers flag registers where uh, whatever the uh, concerned flag registers are there it will get affected for example if uh, both the values are uh, equivalent values you will get zero so zero flag will be affected in case uh, r1 is uh, greater than r2 obviously no fl flags will be affected while r1 if it is lesser than r2 then borrow flag I mean borrow flag in the sense the carry flag will be reset to specify that a borrow has happened so uh, in this case uh, in case if I am giving a value as uh, instead of uh, 5 I am giving a value as 1 and uh, for R2 I am giving a value as 2 it is like 1 divided by 2 if you are feeding in a value 1 divided by 2 your quotient should be 0 while your remainder will be 1 so that is the answer that we have to give so to do that I am using this compare statement so I am subtracting subtracting in the sense uh, subtracting for checking whether R1 is greater than R2 or not so after uh, subtracting this I will need to check whether the borrow flag has been set so I will put like BCC BCC means branch if carry is clear so if carry is clear means that signifies R1 value is lesser than R2 so I shouldn't do any subtractions I'll, I should leave the uh, thing as such so your R1 will be uh, giving the reminder while uh, we can keep R3 register for um, specifying the quotient so quotient will be 0 so BCC L I have made then uh, in case for uh, for this program I have mentioned like 5 divided by 2 so 5 is greater than 2 so it will get into this um, I mean uh, this particular instruction where I should go for subtraction process so sub r1 comma r2 so subtraction I have done then add r3 r3 is for quotient r3 comma hash 0x 0 1 so the num uh, how many times it is getting subtracted this r3 will get the count so after doing this I will put a unconditional branch L1 so here it has to be connected so after this add r3 I am branching to this compare statement so again and again it will it has to compare so here subtract r1 comma r2 I have uh, made so uh, 5 minus 2 the result will be stored inside r1 itself so r1 will get updated so after this again r1 will be compared first time when it is getting uh, uh, subtracted r1 value goes to 3 and uh, 3 and 2 uh, will be compared so again it is it does go into subtraction so 3 minus 2 1 will be there r3 will be incremented to uh, from 1 to 2 then again it will come and 1 and 2 it will compare so it will come out of the loop when it comes out of the loop uh, so here I will put L so this is where it should come out when R1 becomes lesser than R2 so here I <coughs> will um, end the program by putting a branch L so it will come and stay over here so that is the end of the program 
so here i'll put a end so bcc represents branch if carry is clear as i've already uh, mentioned whenever you want uh, <coughs> uh, want to check whether the borrow flag is set or uh, not you need to see the carry flag when uh, borrow has happened carry flag will be reset so when carry flag is reset it does mean that borrow has happened when borrow has happened it does mean that r1 is lesser than r2 so we have made the division program and we'll save it click save so uh, i'll put a di b1 dot asm and save so now the program is saved so add it to the source group add existing files to source group and uh, search for this uh, div one dot asm okay div one dot asm i'm adding now i'll translate so zero error zero warning build and rebuild so translate build and rebuild i have done <coughs> get into start stop debug session click ok now step by step r not uh, sorry r1 is loaded with 5 r2 is loaded with 2 then comparison happens so you will not get a borrow so subtraction happens so 5 minus 2 3 is loaded into r1 so r3 is loaded by 1 then <coughs> again comparison happens then uh, you don't get a borrow so subtract r1 minus r2 so your uh, r1 becomes 1 add r3 by 1 so r3 becomes 2 then again it goes to compare r1 comma r2 so now r1 has become 1 and r2 is 2 so you'll get a borrow so it comes out of the loop and uh, that's it now in this case r3 is the quotient while r1 becomes a reminder so r3 2 is the quotient r1 1 is the reminder so this is the basic uh, program for division basic addition subtraction and division we have discussed thank you good day everyone so now we'll uh, continue with the basic programming with arm 7 processor uh, just now we have uh, discussed uh, how to uh, program addition subtraction multiplication and division using the registers if you want to use the memory then uh, we need to do it a different way so we'll discuss the same addition subtraction multiplication and division using the memory so uh, i'll start as i've uh, started earlier with a new new vision project with uh, some name and w e and uh, save so select uh, legacy devices and in which choose the nxp and in NXP search for LPC 2148 click LPC 2148 click OK yes yes and uh, remove the startup dot yes ok now uh, we will uh, start with a new file so area some label comma code comma uh, read only then so here as I have said that uh, we are going to get the uh, data from the memory so um, now we are going to uh, write a program for uh, adding two numbers the two numbers will be uh, fetching the data from the memory and after uh, uh, summing it up the result will be stored inside the memory again again so first of all we need to initialize the memory address so here i'll uh, <coughs> initialize the memory address in r not register r not with hash 0 x 4 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so here the 4 uh, 0 0 0 0 0 0 is the uh, memory address where uh, I'll be fetching the data from so that time initializing it in the R naught so when I'm putting this instruction mov R naught comma hash 0 x 4 0 0 0 0 this will be a value that will be stored inside R naught so it becomes a memory address when you use it in the indirect memory addressing so let us uh, see how to access the memory so using LDR 
I'll be uh, typing it like LDR R1 comma square bracket open R0 close bracket uh, so this uh, instruction uh, load register R1 with the content of um, the with the content of uh, content that is available in the uh, memory 4000000 so this is the indirect memory addressing wherein i'll be fetching the data indirectly from the memory address 4000000 to r1 register next uh, we will be fetching the data from the next memory address to move on to the next memory address we'll have to uh, add add r not with hash 0x04 here we are adding uh, 4 towards r0 because like uh, each and every 32 bit number will have 4 8 bit addresses so 4 0 0 0 0 0 and uh, 0 0 1 0 0 2 and 0 0 3 will be associated with the single memory address as a 32 bit number block so that block uh, will have to uh, skip from so for skipping that I am adding 4 towards the R0 register so after adding I am fetching the data from the memory address into R2 register using this instruction so now the second data is being fetched and uh, next is <coughs> I need to add the two numbers so I will put ADD R3 comma R1 comma R2 okay so in this case in case uh, in case if we have a very large number in uh, R1 and R2 and when we are having when we are getting any uh, carry we should check the carry so for checking the carry uh, for add we will be putting a uh, I mean letter S yes, so that after adding in in case if uh, carry is being set that will be reflected in the flag so if carry flag is uh, set then I will be incrementing the uh, R4 register by 1 so for uh, doing that I will be using this BCCL branch if carry is clear if carry is clear then I will be jumping out of the loop else if carry is set then I will be adding R4 with a value hash 0x0 one so r4 represents the carry so here i'll be jumping in case if i don't get a carry so now addition is performed and the carry has been checked now uh, we'll have to put the result into the memory again so for doing that what i'll do is i'll put add r not comma hash 0x04 so so in this case again uh, 40000 and 40004 will be acting like uh, input memory addresses while 40008 and uh, consecutively uh, the 40000c will be having the sum and uh, carry respectively so to go to 40008 i am adding uh, 4 towards r0 so that is this instruction and after doing that i'll uh, <coughs> put the instruction str r 3 comma square bracket r not then again add r not comma hash 0x04 to go to the next memory address block and then str r4 the carry towards the memory address r not so this is the end of the program so here I'll use a branch L1 and end at the end statement at the end so now as we have done earlier we will save the program save the program as sum mem dot asm and save ok whatever the program that we have saved we need to add into the source group that I am doing now <coughs> so click the asm source over here and search for sum mem so here it is available I can add and close now as we have done earlier same translate then build 
and uh, rebuild I can click so that my program is compiled now I need to get into the start stop debug session to uh, run the program in the simulation mode so I am getting into that so now uh, here in this case I need to uh, give the input values into the memory so for that I will be opening the memory window so click view and uh, click the memory window 1 so if it doesn't appear again you can do the same option your memory window will appear so in this memory window you can type 0x4 0 0 and enter so you may ask me uh, what is the uh, we need to have only this memory address because as far as this LPC 2148 you, uh, you need to look into the memory mapping where uh, the read write memory is available so in case if you want to check that you can always uh, get into this uh, <coughs> debug and check this memory map so it will show which are the memories that is available for you to execute so you can uh, you uh, you can see over here these from starting from 0000 to 0007 fffff is execute and read so that you can't use it for um, um, the reading and writing that is like uh, I mean you can use it uh, for fetching the data for uh, doing any operation but um, in the second one you can see 0x3 fffc 00 to 0x4 000 7 fffff is a read write so that you can use it for your own uh, uh, mean scribbling purpose here uh, we can call this as a scribble pad wherein i am putting something inside the memory and uh, fetching it uh, doing some uh, some operation maybe arithmetic and uh, putting the result into the same uh, uh, scribble pad memory so since uh, uh, this 0x4000 is uh, um, comfortable for me i have used that 0x4000000 as the memory address you can use uh, these things also 0x7 fffff this area also you can use as a uh, read write so since uh, um, it has been fixed as this one the 0x3 ff c00 and the 0x uh, the range that has been fixed i have chosen this memory address okay now so this um, memory addressing follows little indian format wherein you need to give the lower order uh, byte in the first memory address so here i'll give 03 and i'll have to leave this uh, this will have the address 400001 and this is 400002 and uh, this one 3 and this one will be 4 so here i'll have to click and again i'll put some number maybe uh, 404 so two numbers i have included so now let me uh, run the program step by step so i'll increase the memory window okay now uh, the first step uh, now we can see that uh, r not is loaded with uh, 400000 then uh, uh, then comes this ldr r1 comma within brackets r not so you can see r1 is loaded with 3 so the 3 has been fetched into uh, the R1 register you can see that R0 content is 40000 and from that 400000 this 3 has been fetched into the R1 register so this is indirect memory addressing and we'll be using this uh, for addressing even the special function registers also so we can address in this way so the first uh, fetching has been completed now this one has been increased to the r not has been increased to 400004 so that it goes and points to the next memory address block so uh, now r2 is fetched with the 4 that we have given here you can see whenever the data has been fetched the color has been changed to red so indicating that this data has been fetched into the registers now uh, we can uh, I mean expand this CPSR also and uh, you can see the add has, has been performed so you will not get a carry because like uh, it's a very small number 4 plus 3 so it is resulting in 7 so your carry flag is not set so it will jump to the next instruction of R0 uh, adding R0 with the value of 4 <coughs> So your uh, memory address. I mean, uh, here we have we have kept R not as the memory pointer. So that has been um, mean incremented to four zero 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 eight. Then you 
you can see now the result 7 the str r3 comma r0 so because of this instruction it has been stored inside this memory block that is 400008 so now uh, <coughs> since 40008 has been uh, uh, given with the sum the 4000c will be given with the carry so we don't have a carry so uh, again to go for that memory address you need to increment it by adding r0 with the value 4 so that has been done and the carry has been stored over here so you can see uh, the value 0000 that has been stored so whenever uh, any value is stored inside the memory the memory um, mean you can see that number color has been changed to like pale green so uh, whenever it is being fetched it turns into red whenever uh, the value has been put into the memory it turns into pale green <coughs> so this is the end of the program in case if you want to check with a uh, large number that also you can do so again we'll get into the uh, mode and you can see now I'll put a 0 2 maybe 3 4 5 6 FF so the first number has been given now I'll put all the values as FF so that I can so that I'll get a I may get a carry so again I'm fetching the data so so addition has been performed let me check the CPSR you can see that the carry has been set which indicates that after this addition the carry has been uh, mean uh, created so when the carry has been created R4 is uh, incremented by 1 so after the result I mean the result has been stored and the carry 1 also has been stored so our uh, program is working perfectly so the same thing can be repeated for uh, subtraction also so in case uh, uh, you're using subtraction uh, in case if you want to check whether borrow has happened you need to check uh, uh, using BCS so here I mean without going to the other uh, memory window I mean uh, the editor window I am editing in this uh, same program itself so I'll put SU B yes so in case if borrow has happened I need to represent that in the R4 register so if uh, in the case of uh, borrow here uh, mean when carry is uh, carry flag is cleared which means that uh, borrow has happened so I have to jump when carry has been set which represents the borrow has hasn't happened so for that reason I am using this instruction PCS which means branch if carry is set so if carry is set I will be jumping over here representing that there is no borrow if uh, carry is clear it will get into this instruction which represents the borrow is there so let us uh, check the program okay now here I'll put a value maybe 4 and 2 so the result should be 2 so 4 has been fetched and 2 has been fetched and uh, subtraction has happened and the result is 2 then uh, I mean it has been jumped since the borrow is not there then 2 has been represented and there is no borrow that has also been represented so in case if I want to give a different number I can go for pressing this reset so it uh, the memory pointer comes over here again with the same uh, uh, screen itself I can change the data so I will change the data to uh, maybe this one as uh, 2 and this one as 3 so 2 minus 3 so we should get a borrow so let us see I mean first data 2 has been fetched second data 3 has been fetched so 2 minus 3 it is FFFFFF so all the values are FFFF so which means that it is it has got a borrow so that can be checked over here the carry flag is 0 <coughs> which means that borrow has happened and since borrow has happened your R4 register is incremented by 1 and uh, <coughs> 
the result has been stored you can see uh, this is the uh, difference and this is the borrow that has been obtained so this is the explanation for subtraction in case if you want to use the multiplication you can uh, do it in this same program itself by editing like uh, uh, mean m u l in case if your uh, program will result in only 32 bit uh, uh, result so in this case uh, bcs and uh, this one is not necessary so we'll delete and uh, even this uh, this one is not necessary because r3 will be having the product r4 is insignificant so we'll remove that one also so this is the program for multiplication so let us run it okay now uh, again we'll have to give a value so 3 and possibly 2 so 3 and 2 2 6 we should get so 3 has been fetched 2 has been fetched 6 is the result 6 is stored that's the end of the program so in case if you want to use uh, long multiplication you can put u m u l l so unsigned multiplication with one more register r4 so r4 will have the uh, lower uh, 32 bit and r3 will have the higher 32 bit so <coughs> here again this uh, l we can remove not necessary so here again we'll have to put add r not comma hash 0x04 and str r3 comma r not so sorry this is a r4 okay now i mean i'll save it again translate build and rebuild so uh, getting into the start stop debug session i'll give a big number maybe four three two three twelve ten i mean one then uh, this is one number and uh, four five one one two two three so the number fetched will be um one one two two three four three so the little indian format uh, fetches the data in that way so here we can see that four zero 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 and the memory address has been initialized then as I've already told you 0 1 1 2 uh, 2 3 3 4 has been fetched to R1 register then uh, memory address has been uh, uh, incremented to 4 then uh, the second data 0 3 2 2 1 1 4 5 has been fetched now multiplication has happened so you can see uh, this is the result so R4 is having the lower 32 bit and R3 is having the higher 32 bit so this value will be put into the memory address as shown below so in case if you want to check the answer result you can check it using this calculator putting it in hex mode so in hex mode uh, we are supposed to type one one two two three four three multiplied by 0 3 2 2 1 1 4 5 ok so you can see 3 5 a e 4 f 6 2 0 f 4 0 4 so whatever the value that has been obtained is the same so this is the way you do the <coughs> multiplication program so in case we want to do the division program that also you can do it uh, in this way so we need to edit it again so instead of uh, mul 
will uh, uh, write the compare statement over here cmp r1 comma r2 then bcc l then sub r1 comma r2 then add R3 comma hash 0x01 then branch L1 so this L1 let it go to compare that's it so BGGL should happen here in case and uh, this one let it make it L2 okay so now uh, you can understand from the program flow r not is loaded with the memory address and uh, uh, ldr is for fetching the data into the r1 register the mean in this case the numerator then r2 is the denominator i am comparing whether numerator is uh, lesser than the denominator in case if it is so bcc represents branch if carry is clear so uh, in case borrow happens the carry will be cleared so it will come to this uh, instruction where I'm incrementing the R0 by 4 so um, it goes to the uh, memory address 40008 and uh, it stores the R3 R3 will not be having anything so 0 will be stored R3 will be the quotient then uh, <coughs> in case uh, if I'm having a reminder reminder will be available in r1 so in case like uh, r1 is uh, lesser than r2 say uh, for an example r1 is 1 and r2 is 2 it is 1 divided by 2 wherein the quotient will be 0 and reminder is 1 so uh, reminder will be available in r1 so r1 should be printed to the memory so i am changing this uh, r4 to r1 so this is the program explanation we have already discussed the uh, logic behind the uh, division program already now it is like uh, I'm using the memory address for uh, checking its <coughs> uh, workability so done now I'll give a value maybe 5 here and 2 here so 5 divided by 2 so first uh, 4000 is loaded into loaded into r0 then uh, the value 5 is fetched into r1 then uh, 4000004 i mean that is incremented by add r0 comma has 0 x 04 then uh, 2 has been fetched to r2 then comparison goes on so uh, i mean it is like uh, r1 and r2 so you don't get a carry so I mean you don't get a borrow so here carry flag is set which represents there is no borrow then subtract r1 and r2 so 5 minus 2 it is 3 then it goes for adding the r3 with 1 then again compares uh, 3 and 2 is compared so you don't get a borrow so subtract again so 3 minus 2 is 1 then add R3 uh, with 1 so R3 becomes 2 then uh, <coughs> again compare 1 and 2 so you will get a uh, borrow so you can see here the carry flag is I mean uh, uh, changed to 0 representing borrow is happening so it will jump out of the loop now uh, and it is adding the R0 with uh, 40008 and uh, it stores the content of R3 that is the quotient into the memory address 2 and uh, str r1 r1 happens to be the quotient that is stored inside the next memory address that is 40000000c so that is the end of the program so this is division program with memory thank you